Good morning, everybody. This is uh, once more the uh, seminars by the Instituto de Astrofisica de Andalusia in Granada, Spain. And today we will have the talk by uh, Alessandro Razza, sorry. Uh, he will talk about Fang Alpha, a narrow band survey of nearby star forming galaxies observed with ALMA. So Ale Alexandro, uh, he made his master's degree in astronomy in 2014 at Stockholm University. But before that, the bachelor degree in physics and astrophysics at the University of Rome in La Sapienza in 2008. From 2015, he enrolled as a PhD student at the University of Chile. And he was awarded at ISO studentship to work uh, at ISO Chile for two years in 17 and 18. He has a past as an athlete and a sport trainee. And he worked four years as outdoor trainer for leadership, motivational and team building programs. So I think that will be a very nice uh, talk. And we will learn about this uh, observational survey doing with Alma. Alessandro, welcome. Thank you for uh, accepting or uh, saying yes for uh, this talk. And um, if you want to add something to your bio or say something before your talk, please. I was just saying that this is my second life as astronomer. Somebody told me, oh, you had the first life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the way, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to to show the work have been done uh, since um, quite a lot time ago. And uh, a, since I arrived here in Granada, I'm now located in Granada visiting on, uh, UGR. And uh, a, I didn't have any opportunity to, to talk with anybody, of course, because of the uh, confination we are living, the pandemia, and uh, we, this is a, a great opportunity to, to get in touch uh, with, with people uh, working here in Granada. And, and at the same time, I don't know if uh, Luis is connected. Who is Galbani? I don't see him. I need to. Um, no. a, I need to say that I'm, I'm here to work with him at the project we started the times ago and we he is patiently waiting for this paper and I'm going to talk about uh, to go out and uh, go back uh, working with him so I, I will be uh, still here for the whole year and um, uh, working with uh, Luis Galbani at uh, UGR um, okay but let, let's talk of uh, Let's talk about uh, that I've been doing. I guess it's time to share the screen now. Yeah, I will. I will mute myself and disappear and let the floor to you. Okay. As René said, the the name of the project is Fang Se Chalfa in Aruban Sarbi of nearby Saphomi Galaxy observed with Alma. I will tell in a couple of slides why, why there is ALMA in it. But it's basically uh, a, a survey of uh, H alpha narrowband maps. A, there is a collaboration uh, behind that, but specifically, so there are many people involved in, uh, in collaborating actively to, to, to this project and this survey as well. Um, there are many observers I won't um, mention, but people that went with me at the observatory to observe. But the core work, working group is the one that you see below. So it's me, uh, Brent Groves from uh, University of Western Australia, Guillermo Blanc, which is also my supervisor at Universidad de Chile, uh, that is a Carnegie astronomer and also a professor at Universidad de Chile, Sian. Uh, which is currently the leader of the working group from Max Planck Institute. Eating, which was the for, he was the former uh, leader of the group. 
and uh, he's now um, working in data science, as many astronomers do, um, for many reasons. Uh, and uh, but their contribution was really important, specifically me and uh, me. I'm charged about uh, many aspects of the the survey. This is all, this, uh, all the aspects. And Brent Groves is the other data reducer in terms of uh, one part I will tell you about later. OK, uh, uh, sorry, let me put in uh, um, presentation mode. OK, the outline is uh, just uh, I will tell about the, the reason why we have a fine search of a sample. I will tell a little bit in detail to understand you what are the instruments that the telescope employed, uh, the, uh, the observation campaign. Then I will stay a lot of time and sorry, apologies from, from the beginning because this is a, a survey work and survey paper. So there's gonna be a lot of data reduction. So for who is interested in, in some details, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm an observational astronomer, so uh, I think uh, it's also important to show what are the recipes we used uh, to, to get the final product we are going to deliver. Then uh, a, a part which is, which is very important, uh, that, that is the external validation with uh, MUSE data. And then a little bit, one important product of the work with, that is uh, start to measure it maps out of uh, H-alpha line fluxes. Okay, uh, please, very important, interrupting whenever you want. If there is a question, there is really no problem uh, from my side to answer in real time because there can be some detail that you can lose. Uh, there will be uh, plots explaining uh, the procedures we use and uh, the general aspect uh, of uh, the results. So please interrupt me whenever you, you want. Okay, thanks, Alpha. I know that the, there was a presentation by Eva Schinnerer, which is a, a core member of FANX, a leader and PI of uh, many observations, um, carry on uh, for, for the collaboration. So I don't have to say much more. I don't know who attended the, uh, her presentation. She can do that and talk about <laughs> Funk's collaboration thousand times better than me. The only thing I want to show is this a nice picture showing NGC 628, uh, um, that is a face on galaxy, with uh, uh, overplot the two main data set the Funk is using. So there are CO uh, maps from um, Alma data and the uh, H alpha from um, Muse data. A, you can already judge from this picture that you can uh, play a lot with uh, this information uh, for many reasons. Uh, I will tell you about the resolution that is really crucial in this case, in many scientific cases. Uh, but you can see by eye that there is a, a displacement in the two regions. So you can really uh, trigger a lot of science. For example, so for example, study the time scale uh, between uh, the giant molecular clouds and the, uh, the, uh, the ongoing star formation. Let's move on uh, to the Funk Alma for example. So when uh, Funks uh, got um, time for an ALMA large program, they started collecting data. And uh, the status now is that uh, they have 74, if I'm not wrong, uh, in, in, in uh, galaxies. These are the images taken by uh, with uh, in um, three color composite uh, picture by using uh, galax in um, and wise and the first two channels of wise. Um, so from this uh, uh, sample, for which uh, I uh, uh, we have um, CO maps, uh, we needed to have the counterpart in H alpha. So another large uh, large program, uh, thanks, uh, was granted with the time, is uh, called the Funks Muse. 
And that's very important for me because there is a, a lot of uh, interconnection between uh, my survey, our survey, and uh, Funk's Muse survey. Uh, for example, in this picture, you can see all the 19 galaxies taken in more than 70 hours of exposure with the Muse instrument in Paranal. And you can see also the number of pointings necessary to cover the largest um, uh, field of view possible. And um, those Muse pointings are overimposed to um, Funk's H alpha images. So the one in background are, are the, uh, the, uh, the, the 19 images taken with 19 of um, the, all the galaxies taken for, uh, with our campaign. Uh, both Alma pipeline paper and um, uh, Funk's Muse are coming out. So stay tuned and uh, read uh, as soon as possible those very interesting papers. Um, I can tell a couple of words if it's not too early now in uh, my presentation uh, about uh, um, the thing that Funk's Muse used the uh, Funk's H alpha galaxies for both uh, uh, calibrating the flux point by point against the broadband image of, uh, I will tell you in detail uh, later, but uh, against the broadband images, uh, Funk's H alpha. And uh, also the astronomy was very important because uh, Funk's H alpha was used, at, was used as reference image to, to combine all the, the, the pointings together. Uh, okay, so, but the reason why we have Funk's H alpha is that we wanted to have an H alpha counterpart for as much as possible the Funk's Alma galaxies. So nothing more complicated than this, but you can already understand what is the importance of having a larger sample uh, in H alpha. Of course, if you cannot afford to, to do a very large program like this, that requires uh, many hours, you use a, a detector and you use photometry because in this case you can reach eventually with a good uh, size telescope a good level of resolution that is comparable with uh, ALMA data and at the same time you uh, uh, carry on a campaign which is much 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 less observation expensive we could really in uh, in in uh, four winter nights, observe uh, 15 galaxies. Um, okay, so let, let me talk about now the observation campaign. Please interrupt me if you have any question again. Um, we use uh, two instruments in two different telescopes, both in Chile. So one is uh, um, very important for when you observe uh, nearby galaxies is a wide field imager at uh, the Max Planck uh, telescope, 2.2 meters telescope in Asia. I went there for the first uh, run, then uh, the rest was observed in uh, service mode. Uh, uh, with, uh, so I will call it Wi-Fi because astronomers there use this uh, this way, but this is WFI. Wi-Fi is made of HCCD. Unfortunately, not working all uh, at the same time. Uh, ISO hasn't been, uh, maintain uh, this uh, instrument since I think 2003, something like that. And uh, it's, it's more or less dying. Uh, at the, the end of the campaign, we could use just three CCDs, but in the beginning we had eight of them. And uh, uh, the um, it's very, very, very useful and it's comparable with the fractal, the music factory, as you can see. 30 galaxy in, in total were observed. The other instrument um, is um, the direct CCD, which is much smaller field of view, but still much larger than uh, the one uh, arc minute uh, we have with um, Muse. The pixel resolution is comparable with, um, with uh, the one uh, for Wi-Fi. We observe in uh, observing mode, the whole campaign. Uh, uh, 
we were responsible of taking the, the data together. Uh, so people from the team, from the collaboration came in Chile and we observed together. Um, oh, the Dupont telescope, of course, is the one in the, in the hill uh, <laughs> in the other um, peak over there. It's not the, 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 the in the uh, foreground Magellan's are there. The Magellan telescopes are in the foreground. Okay, uh, so at the end, you can see from this uh, plot uh, the difference in field of view we have. So this is a, a color image uh, from uh, DSS uh, of NGC 628, where Wi-Fi, eight uh, CCDs, and a single detector direct CCD are, are shown, together with uh, the field of view of Mu and Alba together. So that, that is really to show the potentiality of having uh, having a, a larger field of view instrument. Um, to complete the idea of the observation, here are the filters employed, where we uh, overimpose uh, to a nature region uh, spectrum uh, uh, in NGC six to eight again. We had one broadband uh, filter for each instrument and one H alpha for Wi Fi and two H alpha um, filters for narrowband filters for DuPont telescope, the direct CCD instrument. And you can see that uh, more or less uh, is um, one of the two H alpha uh, centered while the other one is shifted. So we, were, we could use uh, this uh, for, to observe uh, more distant galaxies. In this way, we could uh, spare some time uh, computing the filter transmission. You can see from the picture on the right hand side that there is no, um, the data, depending on the ratio, of course, the H alpha flask can or cannot fall uh, fully within the, the filter. And this way, it's needed a correction. I will talk much later about that uh, briefly. And, but with uh, having the two consecutive filters could help uh, the whole campaign uh, without having afterwards problem in, in the data reduction. Uh, another important thing is that uh, both uh, N2 lines fall in um, each alpha filter. That's very important. Okay, uh, in general, the observation strategy was um, uh, devising, uh, we, we observe uh, in observing blocks of more or less two and a half hours each for each galaxy. We stay one hour and a half in both, um, sorry, in each alpha filter in uh, 20, 30 minutes in uh, our band. And uh, the rest of time we try to observe a spectral photomany standard star uh, in, in immediately after. Even if in the data reduction was not so crucial, but we, we needed to take uh, as many as possible. And a data department was applied to, to try to remove uh, the gaps between the CCD. We, I showed already for Wi-Fi and uh, in general, the bad pixels. So you need at least the three uh, pointings where two to, for the bad pixel, but for the gaps, you need uh, uh, at least three pointings. Another important uh, aspect is that we, we uh, try to uh, take into account the the exposure of, uh, in the core, for example. So we had to take uh, one short exposure in our band. This, we, we, can, we could do it with the DuPont in observing mode, but it was a little bit more difficult uh, in, in service mode with the other instrument. But by the way, we, we took some uh, short exposure um, uh, frame to uh, recover for the, um, um, for the saturated pixel in the core. Of the galaxy, and uh, we could, when we were observing, we could uh, adjust the exposure time uh, to our necessity. If we noticed that we were uh, overexposing too, too much, we could uh, change uh, in real time uh, the, the exposure time of uh, each individual frame. Uh, so, to conclude the observation part. Um, this is the picture of uh, uh, our sample in the context of the star forming uh, mean sequence, uh, star forming galaxy mean sequence. 
uh, compared with um, a paper that came out uh, last year is uh, Z0, which stands for redshift zero. Um, compiling a really large uh, sample uh, of um, uh, self formation main sequence galaxies for which uh, there are, for example, the mass and the self formation rate estimates. And uh, the square shows where the Muse galaxies are, the 19. And uh, what else? And that is the total number of uh, galaxy reducers right now. If you don't have questions, I will move on. Okay. This is going to be the longest part. I, I hope uh, you, you, you can be interested in, the, in some of the aspects of the data reduction in general. And the data reduction we, we, with the recipes we, we adopted for, for our survey. So, uh, these are the, all the steps up to getting uh, the uh, final uh, H-alpha uh, narrowband fluxes. So first you need to, to the trend the CCDs. Um, then I needed to do an astrometric registration of each CCD taken individually. Uh, then uh, with this solution, uh, everything could be reprojected in the correct uh, astrometry. And uh, in this way, also uh, rebuilding the mosaics for the instruments uh, with, with, for Wi-Fi. Then uh, from that moment on, everything was um, considered as being uh, one single image for the photometric calibration, background subtraction, and then the combination of each frame uh, all together, which goes with the background subtraction step, uh, I will tell you afterwards. And the last part, which is which, that was not mine directly, but Brent Groves did, is the R band continuous subtraction in order to get uh, rid of the continuum and uh, having only the fluxes from the narrow band. And of course, within the field, the Chaffa filters uh, folds the continuum as well. Um, okay. So, uh, as I was saying, each individual CCD was treated uh, separately. And uh, um, I had to go from uh, the raw, raw images to a uh, clean images as uh, everybody. Uh, but uh, believe me, uh, with instrument uh, had um, a quantity of bad columns, which are not very visible in this image, but uh, uh, I had to... Um, uh, Bed and artifacts of the instrument. There is also there are also ghosts with the cross talks between the amplifiers. A lot of issues. Another issue we had to do uh, promptly was to calibrate the gain um, um, sorry. Yes. Let me let me show. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the final result after having, having calibrated the, the gain, but the whole procedure is, uh, is here. So um, is in the, in the second block. So gain was estimated from, with uh, the genesis method. I don't know if you uh, are aware of it, uh, because uh, uh, we didn't have uh, any information from ISO. There were all the measurements, uh, and I already noticed that they, they had this, uh, this outcome. So we, we, I started from one initial guess with genesis method, and then uh, we did an empirical gain correction by rescaling uh, each CCD to each other. So we had to treat them uh, separately, but of course the flat field in gain correction to get to have an homogeneous uh, signal uh, uh, had to be treated uh, for all the eight CCD together for each frame and for each galaxy. Uh, then, of course, the standard deviation images uh, is created uh, and uh, uh, the error is propagated all over the pipeline from the CCD processing and, uh, and beyond. 
And uh, as I already mentioned, the, uh, the mask uh, task was really, really tough. And I had to go back uh, in uh, several dead releases. And in dead release two, we had to create a brand new mask, masks for Wi-Fi instrument. Um, OK, let's move to the astronomy, which was, was really crucial and important step, uh, especially because that was needed uh, for the Funks Muse uh, um, collaboration as well. So uh, the, uh, the registration was done in three steps. First of all, in the very beginning of the pipeline, before the trending, I, ju I uh, just uh, wrote uh, in the um, a rough astronomical solution by taking into account the, the position of the centers of the galaxies. And then during the pipeline, uh, a more refined correction with the distortion as well is made with the three software uh, in uh, in a row, extractor to extract sources, camp to make a registration toward the reference, which is Gaia, that there is one. For historical reason, I, I could uh, use just uh, uh, for the version of camp I was using, uh, I could use just uh, Gaia, that there is one. And then to work with is uh, the uh, reprojector. So in this case, you, I could reproject science, error, and masks all together in a, in a common grid. And if in the case of Wi-Fi, rebuild the mosaics. Uh, then there, there is the, the whole part of the pipeline. And only in the very end, we measure the, the offset with uh, respect to Gaia that is two. And uh, it was uh, just a shift, no rotation in, in it. And we apply that offset to recenter to zero. So we didn't change in this case uh, the, the deviation from, uh, sorry, the dispersion but we did change the, the zero point of the astrometry. Uh, this is a brief check a uh, long time ago that we didn't have the rotation. Uh, this is a, just a delta between uh, pre-register and, uh, and stars and after registration with Gaia at least one, okay? And there was a, not even a, a, a trend with uh, the specific chip for Wi-Fi. So this chip one up to eight, as you can see. Okay, this is an example of uh, how we measure the offset. Actually, here is uh, already recentered, so it's uh, this is the final offset of uh, the last uh, dead release, and uh, for one galaxy only. Um, the color map just is just showing the um, proper motion of the stars according to Gaia that is two. And then we have the dispersion uh, from the 1D histograms. A delta, of course, is a delta is uh, the array and deck of our images by extracting sources uh, newly, like uh, not like not knowing anything about uh, like being a user of the the, the survey, and then uh, uh, checking them against uh, Gaia that is two. This is uh, the the very final uh, uh, result of the astrometry by putting together all the stars exactly in all the images. This is the whole survey. So this is a measure of what we can do. Uh, uh, CCD, um, the direct CCD image is showing uh, uh, a dispersion, only one galaxy that uh, we are still including, but it's uh, a, um, a target in the Milky Way uh, plane. So, um, so, um, it's too crowded. We have really problem, and the centroid is not measured correctly, and so the comparison with Gaia goes, uh, if not crazy. Okay, this is uh, the counterpart of the final result for each alpha. The one uh, before was uh, the broadband filter, and this is the narrowband filter. And um, this plot sh shows just the dispersion. Because this is the mean of the dispersion of each star in each field, meaning that uh, by construction is just a standard deviation. And uh, you can see that this standard deviation goes with the number of stars because the bars on, in, in the right, right hand side of this plot uh, have a larger error that comes from uh, a, a lower number of stars. So the main factor. In this case, the expression solution is the, is the number of stars in the field. Uh, 
you can see also that the NGC 1809, uh, that is the, the bad galaxy, is uh, the, the worst uh, so many solution as well. Okay, if you don't have questions, I will move to the photometry, which is the longest part, and then the presentation will be uh, almost done. Um, okay, uh, as I said, after the astrometric part of the pipeline, the data, the images were treated as being a single, uh, uh, a single frame. Okay. The mosaic is already there. As you can see, this was one of, of the guys you observed in the beginning of the campaign. So we had all the HCCD working perfectly, almost perfectly. And we extracted, I extracted with Aria find uh, the stars. Then I remove uh, non isolated stars uh, with, some, uh, with some special treatment. And then I matched uh, the remaining uh, sources with uh, Gaia, Gaia Daedalus 2 in order to be sure that we were, we were having the same uh, type of uh, uh, stars in both. The plot on the right hand side is the way we measure the zero point for the broadband. Uh, all, so this is a zero point against uh, uh, the conversion from Gaia bands to um, Johnson causing R band. And uh, after sigma clipping of the data, um, I basically took uh, the average of the zero point. But uh, let, let, let me go a little bit uh, through uh, the, the way I, I computed that zero point in that plot. So the one on top is the normal formula we are supposed to use uh, for for, to compute the magnitude from an aperture photometry. So if we have, for example, an um, in instrumental magnitude, specifically if we have uh, the flux as uh, we had after the um, first part of the data reduction, the, the trending in electron, given in electron per second, then you can find a zero point to whatever band, in this case, I'm writing the X band, by subtracting the contribution of the air mass. In this case, you have the above atmosphere instrumental magnitude. And then you have the zero point remaining. You have also color term. Now, in the whole campaign, we decided not to go for taking a color term, uh, knowing that ESO was giving us a K2 uh, fact coefficient zero for that instrument. And uh, uh, for DuPont, we had uh, one uh, coefficient that was uh, one tenth of K1 of the coefficient for the extinction due to the um, atmosphere only. So uh, the zero point is found by using Gaia that raised two in the, in the, with the transformation below in the um, bottom uh, left corner. So you can see that G minus R, there are transformation, oh, sorry, I forgot to, to cite the paper is one of the Gaia papers, the Evans 2018, where they provide the transformation to uh, the three G, GBP, which is the blue band, and the GRP, which is the red Gaia band, and G is the, the broad band encompassing both. Uh, they gave uh, functions of uh, Gaia color to transform from uh, Gaia G band to sorry, for, from the three bands to what many uh, photometric systems. We needed the Sloan R band for DuPont and we needed the uh, Johnson causing R band for Wi-Fi. There's also a factor that caused a lot of problem in the reduction uh, to discover it. And we needed to, to use a factor to convert from Vega that are the native um, um, Gaia, um, a Gaia calibration to the AB. And that was important to do the rest step because we needed to have all the, so in that way, we reduced the broadband images, but we needed also to to move everything in AB magnitude. I will tell you why. So the, the, the following step is, uh, to um, try to use the spectrophotometry standard star 
fields uh, to correct and, and calibrate H alpha against uh, R band. The extraction, as you, you see, also many white dots, which are the bad pixel, as I was saying uh, before in Wi-Fi camera. And uh, you, we can see the extraction of the point sources and the square right in the middle where the spectral photomagnetic standard star is. So uh, I took uh, a aperture photometer of all of them and the standard star especially. By taking a aperture photometry and having the spectrum of the spectral photomagnetic um, standard star and combine them together with the magnitude formula, we could just find the zero point. If we do for both the, the images taken in, um, in a broad and narrow band, uh, we, need, we took uh, three images uh, with the DuPont because we had two H alpha filters. And we could find a zero point from synthetic magnitude for both uh, the, the filters. I call them 0, 0.0 because they are different from the zero point uh, computed uh, by uh, comparing Gaia with uh, the um, instrumental magnitude. So this is a uh, instrumental magnitude against uh, synthetic magnitude for the spectral for standard star only. After that, uh, we could uh, just simply check that the zero point computed in that way in R band only was comparable with the, the zero point where, that we would have by using the same recipe and the same strategy as for the broadband. And in some cases, we had, we had a very, very good match between the two, the two zero points. And that was a sanity check that we could use uh, uh, either interchangeably the two zero point or 0, 0.0. And it's very important that that could be done only for the R band because for the H alpha, we don't have, um, H alpha standard stars, we cannot transform Gaia bands in H alpha. So uh, and with that, we could uh, compile, uh, co build the, what the, this, this is the most important relation of the, um, the whole work. And it's the color correlation. So how we did this? We took uh, several fields of several spectrophotomagnetic standards having um, different zero points. And we applied um, uh, those zero points to all the other stars to get R minus H alpha. And if you plot it against a Gaia color, which is the uh, easiest thing uh, to do, then you have a relation that you can eventually use to calibrate H alpha against R band. Of course, we had to collect and be careful of selecting stars that were not saturated. We still have uh, some problems, and uh, but this is uh, the very last. Uh, these are the last uh, the results from the very last uh, um, survey uh, data release. Uh, this is the relation for the two H alpha filters, uh, Dupont H alpha filters, and uh, we needed the one one for each of them, because this has nothing to do with uh, the redshift of the galaxy, because this is just a calibration by using foreground stars. So it doesn't matter the redshift here. You, you just uh, use both of them because you want a calibration for it, for H alpha 657 uh, and another one for 663. Uh, so finally, the narrow band calibration is done by using again the zero point formula, but this time, uh, the zero point is the one uh, that has to be computed. Uh, flux H alpha is the instrumental flux uh, in the H alpha images this time from aperture photometry. And H alpha mag is the one that you can retrieve by taking the, the same galaxy observed in R band and already calibrated in Microjansky and use the relation found here and here, and uh, in this way, moving from R to H alpha. Then all these numbers you put in, uh, you, you, you put these numbers for, um, for each star, and you do the average as, uh, as for the broadband. So the average of all, of all the zero points 
in the formula above is the zero point used uh, for that specific frame. So everything I talk about is a single frame uh, wise uh, reduction. If you don't have questions, Either I'm very clear or one, well, definitely not. <laughs> you have, uh, after that, you have uh, well astrometrically and photometrically calibrated uh, frames. What you need to do, you need to subtract the background and combine them together, stack them together. So the background subtraction is really, really, really complicated uh, if you want to be the things uh, carefully. And we, we played a lot in the time. And the last version is, uh, is the one we believe is correct. Uh, this is an example of uh, how you can extract uh, the, the sky uh, by using a sex tractor like uh, routine. Uh, the blue points are those uh, valid. While uh, you mask uh, everything uh, in the ellipse, um, area, you mask, of course, the non-valid pixel in terms of, uh, because they are masked uh, or because uh, they belong to the um, gaps. And uh, uh, so this is a, a very important plot. I will tell you the one, the picture, the first two pictures are those that are already shown. So I don't have to say anything more. Uh, being the one in center top, uh, the sex tractor like background uh, with uh, in pink, everything that is masked. Then after that, you fit uh, a, a simple plane uh, to the to the sex to, to the background. That's very important because uh, if you do in the science, uh, is uh, this, it's not the same result. You don't want uh, such a high dispersion because you have. Uh, a, you, you then you have basically even if you mask the sources you still have uh, a lot of variation but if you do if you fit uh, the the background image itself then you have a simple plane taking into account uh, the the background as successful wanted to wanted to have uh, that is the simplest uh, surface we can use for the background subtraction then you subtract it as you as you can see in uh, the bottom left uh, panel the residual is in bottom center and the, all the pixels uh, only belonging the, to the background, not the sources, uh, are shown in the 1D histogram. And you can see that uh, apart from some uh, deviation, uh, they are fairly centered to zero. We have that plot, those plots for each frame. And I'm going to make also one for the paper, having all the, all the pixel of all the backgrounds in all the frames together. <laughs> And uh, what else? Uh, what's really subtle here and is the masking. You have to be careful masking the sources before doing all the computation. Yeah, the rest is a uh, matter of doing it. Uh, okay, that, that's done. Okay, after that, we, you have a background subtracted, perfectly calibrated single frame, and then and then we did the inverse variance um, uh, weighting. Uh, to stack all the images together. In this way, we could uh, take into account the standard deviations, the, the final, uh, after all the propagation, uh, the whole propagation, uh, you have the standard deviation pixel by pixel. And that is accounted for the final, uh, in the final image. Uh, if you don't have any question on this part, I will go to the continuous subtraction, which is, uh, uh, the PSF determination uh, has been done by me and Brent Groves for the first data release. You extract the sources and then with that uh, you compile, uh, you build uh, an empirical PSF uh, image. The one on the right hand side is the PSF of the full image that by just taking the, the, the right side in your final, your final uh, combined image. So why uh, uh, we had to do that? Because uh, in order to subtract the two images together, you had to, first of all, PSF, do, do the matching between the two PSF. And in some cases, it was not trivial because of the characteristic of the observations. We had some more elliptical shape in the PSF in some of them. 
but but uh, Grant did a great job by uh, taking into account the angle and the differences in the X and Y um, uh, full width of maximum of the empirical PSF. And uh, so uh, once you have the two images reprojected onto the same grid and PSF meshed, the saturation in principle is easy. But unfortunately, you have a shelf line contributions within the broadband filter, and that you it's something that you can you want to get rid of, otherwise, you over subtract the shelf image. And uh, in this way, uh, basically, you 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 try with the uh, um, Brent tried with uh, an iterative uh, process to try to compute uh, uh, from an initial guess the equivalent with uh, the alpha line could have in the broadband filter and then up to not having changed uh, anymore by uh, in, in the subsequent step. At the same time, the last part, the important was to account for the filter transmission. As I said in the beginning, uh, you don't have the full flux uh, in the urban filter of H alpha line because of the ratio. So you have to account uh, uh, what is the loss uh, because you are not completely centered. And uh, we have uh, a, num a number for each uh, galaxy. The other thing, which is more subtle, is uh, the N2 removal. So the N2 lines uh, contribute to the narrow band. And to do that, the assumption we did is, of, of course, not true. We assume a constant number, and we compute that uh, with the filter transmission as well. Um, we compute a, a global number for each galaxy. We know that it's not true, and we know also that it's not constant. <laughs> All over the galaxy. It, it depends on the main factor, including the brightness of uh, the H2 regions. So, but this is the best we can do it right now. We have uh, in mind, uh, probably in the future, not, not specifically in this paper, to um, try to uh, quantify the error we have, at least with this assumption. Uh, okay, in the end, this is uh, what, what we have. Um, 65, they are a little bit more because three galaxies were uh, observed with both instruments. But in total, there are, there are 65 usable galaxies. There are other six which are not these galaxies that are, are observed and they have to be reduced with the pipeline already in place. So it's not going to be a major problem. But these are the galaxies, uh, the, these galaxies we, are, um, we have. And these are the H alpha subtracted images. So the flux you see is the flux from the narrow band. To get from this to the uh, H alpha line flux, you need to uh, apply the filter transmission correction and then to removal. In that way, you have a good estimate of what is the, the final. I, I think I'm running out of time. I hope I'm not so much. But by the way, the last, very last few things. OK, first of all, we wanted to have a comparison. And we used Fundamuse data because we had an observation. And in, in, uh, we have observed the same galaxy, some part of the same galaxy. So first of all, uh, I needed to reproject uh, the Muse pointing, as you see in green, in the top uh, left uh, panel. And you, um, you reproject the two images in the same grid. Then, uh, oh, that is actually an, an H, H alpha line image, OK, uh, from Muse. Then you reproject onto the Wi-Fi images. And then you do the deprojection, as, uh, as you can see below, uh, to get the distances from the center uh, within the, the galaxy disk. And then you have a map of distances uh, as um, in terms of uh, I produce feeds file with it. Uh, with that, you can uh, play with the annuli uh, to compute uh, the surface brightness for each alpha. And this is one of the comparison. We have one for each galaxy. Uh, we cannot uh, use it uh, uh, quantitatively, but yes, we can do that uh, 
qualitatively. Uh, uh, it's ongoing uh, from Funk's Muse, uh, some part of the work, and also from my side to terminate, to end up with uh, the photomedic calibration and the last uh, uh, release of the data that is going to happen uh, the next weeks. And uh, they have to reapply the, to register the photometry of Muse data. And after that, we can uh, compare uh, neatly the, the two the two images but by the way on top we have the h alpha uh, subtract images from our, our um, sample and then uh, the r band filter and uh, muse is convolved within the filter and the same for the narrow band filter um, so uh, qualitatively we can say you can see on the right on the top right uh, panel that there is a flux excess in, um, in Muse compared to our uh, flux. And when you compare Wi-Fi mask, the meaning uh, computing the same profile from our images, but by using only the field of view of uh, Muse, then you get the same result. This gives an idea of how important it is to have a really large uh, image uh, to account for the variation uh, within the annuli without being biased by the position of a specific armor, for example, of a, a bright star from the region within your field of view in, uh, in, and that's all. So that, that I think it's, um, it's very important that you have to be careful uh, if not, if you don't have um, a full image like, uh, like the one we have. Uh, okay, uh, star formation rate maps. This is a sort of a work in progress. Uh, there are going to be papers from the collaboration uh, going in great detail uh, about the star formation rate uh, that you can uh, how you can measure in different way and do um, counter checks uh, with the muse with um, uh, other papers external internal validation whatever we are going just to show a simple recipe of how to go from uh, the h alpha fluxes uh, to uh, an extinction corrected star formation rate maps i will explain with this single slide uh, the idea and what is has been already done uh, and is going to be uh, but we have some uh, caveats that we need to account for, and then we can deliver the maps uh, as product together with uh, the h alpha lines maps. So we first correct for the uh, N2 contamination filter transmission, of course, if you start from narrowband uh, fluxes. Then, uh, okay, the image on the left hand side uh, is uh, convolving to 7.5 uh, axagon of Wise 3 uh, channel, but Wise 4 is uh, red there, is 22 migrants, and uh, is unfortunately 15 axagons. But th that is the one we, we should use uh, to have a correct extinction correction. Uh, then you combine it with uh, Wise 4, as I said, and scaling by a factor from Calcetti 2007. In this way, you have um, extinction correct H alpha by just using uh, the Murphy 2011 um, coefficient to go to star formation rate. Sorry. <laughs> so from extinction correction is the third step. Then the fourth step is, uh, is uh, star formation rate computation. And then you create a scaling map for the H alpha um, by dividing H alpha flux uh, for the star formation rate um, surface brightness as computed before. Uh, of course, you are in this case, you are just using a coarse um, extinction correction of 15 arc second to correct uh, a, a single limited one arc second or better. And the pixel scale, as I said, is 0.25-ish for the two instruments. So, but th this is what uh, uh, the, the simplest recipe we can apply from the product. Okay, I concluded with that. Thank you very much.
and I, I'll take questions. Thank you very much, Alessandro. And uh, now the talk is open for uh, questions. Please uh, raise your hand for doing that. Uh, go to the bottom menu. You will find a reaction button there. And inside that reaction button, you, you, can, you can raise your hand there. So questions for Alejandro. Ruben, yeah, go on. Hi, uh, Al Hi, Alejandro, I'm Ruben. Very nice talk, thank you very much. Nice, nice, nice to see you, nice to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> So um, uh, you commented, I mean, the, the survey has very deep images with a lot of hours there. Um, but could you tell us a little bit about the median signal to noise of the survey in H alpha uh, to get an idea? That's the, the first uh, curiosity I have. And the second, could you comment a little bit? You, you mentioned that um, it's important for the background subtraction the influence how uh, of the masking of the galaxy. I know that if you go too close to the galaxy now, it, it can impact. But if you go so far, uh, I guess that wouldn't impact that much. But it, it, that you said that it was very important, the masking on the sky sub, sub, subtraction. All, all the sources, so the stars around. As well. around. Okay. But there was also another problem that I will tell you. Yeah. OK, I, so yeah. In the, in the reply, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was the question, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I don't have the number for the signal to noise. You are asking me uh, H alpha only filter all the final images. Um, yes, yes. But Arban, of course, if you have that, uh, I'm interested in H alpha, yes. Um, uh, this is a number I should compute for, in, in, uh, for the final images. Mm -hmm. In the two, Uh, I would say that the noise was 10 times bigger in uh, broadband images than in H alpha mm -hmm. against uh, a signal that I cannot tell you. Whatever number I give you, it's not a global number. So. Mm -hmm. um, but another magnitude, more or less. Oh. Well. Um, Yes, definitely. Yes. Uh, yeah, by looking at, well, ju just by looking at the images, so without computing, uh, yes, one minute, couple of magnitudes, yes. Okay. Okay. Couple well, I guess in the day. paper will be. Yes, uh, that's a very important thing. I, I need to uh, compute uh, um, as much as possible. I have still a few numbers to give out <laughs> yes. to, uh, to the readers. Uh, you, you can. You can understand me. I... Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I would say a couple of magnitudes, yeah. Okay. But just by, but you know, uh, you have to be careful with this, uh, mm -hmm. this number because it's not global. Okay. Uh, and and by, looking the... At the, by looking at the background, uh, some uh, some sources. Mm -hmm. And oh, uh, the yes, about, yeah. about the background subtraction, mm -hmm. yeah, all the sources are important. And we had a problem with Wi-Fi, a really huge problem with the filter, because there is a reflection in the, within the H alpha filter. The reflection brought uh, a really steep uh, uh, plane uh, in as background brightness. So I needed to um, first uh, um, mask uh, everything possible. But not without masking this, the, 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 the slope. Otherwise, I, I was just um, um, underestimating the, the background. I see. Okay? So that's very crucial that you mask everything possible, but you have to be uh, not too strict uh, uh, if you have some uh, trend in the background, that's that's very important. See, if you have a flat background like I had with with Dupont, you can do whatever you want. You can even use a complex surface uh, after having masked everything. But if you have some other weird stuff, then it's problematic. Okay. Yeah. The way I mask all the stars and the galaxy. Okay. Ellipse. Trying to take. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, they didn't show the plot, but I, I computed the, the radius I had to to use. 
in order to touch the ground, you know? Okay, okay. I, see. Yeah, they, they, I, I use that number for the whole sample. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you for the, your question. Thank you, Ruben. We have another question by Isabel Marquez. Please go on. Hello, Alessandro. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, I have a several several questions. In fact, uh, but just just to I mean to for, to ask you to please remind me uh, what's the number of the uh, sample galaxies you're you're going to sample with this kind of uh, H alpha imaging. Sixty five. Okay, so last six, six uh, ATG um, early type galaxies. Uh huh. And are not reduced, but they were the list of the uh, of the targets that you're publishing, or is it uh, closed by now? I mean, is it is it, uh, is it public or is it uh, private? Well, you you will see so, uh, the, all the survey papers, fun survey papers are coming out, so uh -huh. they're going to be um, public. And in the same time, this semester the data will be public, reduced uh, with all the recipes for Alma. Re pipeline group, uh, Muse, and uh, for our group, they will be available in probably this semester. Mm -hmm. and, and the kind and, of spatial resolution that you have is about that? In, way, if you are interested in some target uh, in the um, so special, we're, special we're resolution. Working special in AGN hosts. So we were, I mean, we were happy to- I know, I know we have some. Some of them. Uh -huh. I know we have some. Um, and you see one, Three six five is a GN. Sorry, yeah. if if I recall, is an AGN host. Mm -hmm. I know because I have the the course saturated. <laughs> I couldn't do anything about it. And um, uh, well, I can give the list uh, to you any moment, of course. Uh, and at the same time, uh, um, to everybody, of course. And at the same time, special resolution. Um, the distances are from uh, six megaparsec-ish, uh, if, uh, if I recall well, to 20. There are few above uh, 20 megaparsec. The majority are within uh, 17 megaparsec. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, there are many products that are going to be delivered with things. Uh, one is also the new measure distances as well with uh, the tip of... Um, so, so the scales yeah. that you're able to resolve are about how many parsecs or? Uh, for example, for NGC 6 to 8, we are talking about a 50 uh, parsec scale, 50 mm -hmm. parsec scale. Okay. So it's, it's, it's very, but it's one of the closest galaxy, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's really uh, remarkable. This mm -hmm. is the whole um, idea behind the, <laughs> the, the, the programs. And, and concerning the pipeline, do, do you have any any project to, to make it public or at least the, the things that are uh, easily generalizable? Unfortunately not, because it's not uh, easy to, to deliver. Uh -huh. uh, it's a matter of time mainly, but also because uh, uh, my learning curve as all the PhD students uh, grew a lot uh, within time. And uh, it's uh, I think it's impossible to transform uh, Wi-Fi pipeline in something uh, usable. While if it will be done, can be done for DuPont pipeline. At the same time, I will say that it's good because Wi-Fi pipeline is really tailored onto Wi-Fi instrument, while the other one can be applied to whatever single image you have. Mm -hmm. So if in the future that uh, will be this will be if we decide to do that in the future, that, that, that will be the other pipeline. Or whatever, if there is somebody that have more time uh, than me and right now can work on it. But we don't have any plan of delivering. The data, yes, but not the... Okay, and, and, and just, uh, just to end it. By the way, it's a reprodu reproducible mm. in the survey paper, everything will be explained, so. Okay, and, and just to end it, I, I, didn't, I didn't get, uh, what's uh, the width of the filters, of the narrow filters, of h alpha filters? What's the full width and maximum of, uh, of those filters? Ah, oh gosh, I don't recall the number. It's, uh, I can tell you. Approximately, um, I mean. It, it's 200 uh, angstrom, something like that. Ah, okay. It, it, it's something like that. If you want the okay. correct number, uh, I can. No, that's, that, that's, that's enough, okay. So thank you, thank it's, you very it's much. It's 200 uh, angstrom, uh, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your questions. Okay, thank you, Isabel. More questions? For Alejandro.
In fact, Isabel made the, one of the questions that I had, and it is uh, what is the availability of the data? If this observational project, it, there are some embargo time, but uh, you just answered that. Yeah, I'm sure in uh, one semester, in the, in the first semester, the, this is the idea, the first semester of this year yeah. will be public. We, we are now all together trying to, we are uh, converging in a final data, internal data release, uh, which was, is not going to be the very final, but it doesn't matter, the final before the public uh, release. Okay. So um, you're gonna have uh, a bunch of uh, great, uh, data from uh, thanks to Alpha survey, but uh, Alma and Muse as well. As I didn't mention, uh, there is also a Fang's HST paper is out. So look at it with um, a observed global clusters with a great uh, resolution. In future, Muse will be also uh, registered with the HST images uh, to achieve a, a, a even better astrometric precision than with uh, the photometric uh, narrowband. Yeah, so, but by the way, uh, I really bet that the, the first half of uh, during the first half of this year, we're going to have Fangsage Alpha public. Thank you for asking. This is important. <laughs> Any other question? Okay, if uh, okay, no. just me, just yeah. me again. Excuse me. Um, it, it just to to I mean, if it's possible to have not the data but the list of objects, it, it could be fine. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, where, where can I can I send to you, Rene? Uh, I send yeah. I send you my email uh, through the chat. Ah. Okay. You yes. I think it's good. If I'm able to do so, but that's that's yeah. A, I, I, I need to stop it. sharing for it. <laughs> yeah, we can we can stop recording. Thank you, uh, and then we we can keep uh, here talking. Thank you very much, Alessandro, for this uh, talk, and uh, to everybody. Thank you again for your presence here, and see you next week in another seminar.